Welcome back to another exciting episode. Today, we're going to talk about how to make NPCs in RPG Maker MZ. Now, this will, of course, apply to RPG Maker since from way back. So, any of them really. So, in order to make an NPC, so we talked about the events in one of my previous videos. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. Uh, we're going to open up the event editor, right? So the very first thing I like to do when I'm making an NPC, and I'm going to talk about the different types of NPCs and how you could kind of like work with them, right? So the first thing I like to do is, of course, pick the image for that NPC, right? So let's go ahead and just pick an actor. We're going to pick this one, right? So this is our NPC. Normally with NPCs, you don't have to worry about these options. The first walk-in option is fine. Right. Um, the main thing you really want to worry about is autonomous movement. So depend uh, pretty much how do you want the NPC to move? Right. We could either have random, which will just make the NPC walk randomly. Right. This determines the speed of that NPC. If you want the NPC to have a fluid motion that's not non stopping, then you pick the highest frequency. Right. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Right. As you can see, he's walking around. He's not stopping. But if you want him to take breaks in between his little strides, you could lower the frequency. As you can see, he's walking less often. Speed just determines how fast they move from point A to point B. And frequency is how often they move, right? So if I reload this, you'll see the frequency is still the same. But for him to make those movements, they're pretty fast. Right? So that's the first thing you want to determine. So let's go ahead and set this to the highest. And let's go ahead and set this to normal. Actually, let's go ahead and set it to slower. Right? So usually when making NPCs, you want to give them some dialogues. In order to do that, um, you over here in your contents, you double click. You could also right click or hit enter. Right? Uh, you go to show, te show text. Show text is pretty much the main way you're going to be displaying messages to your players, right? So when working with NPCs, you have the option to pick a face, right? So let's go ahead and match that face. Now you don't have to, but you could definitely um, pick the face. And then you could name the NPC, whatever you want to name it. So let's go ahead and call you NPC1, right? For the show text, the background is pretty much how the message will show up. So if I leave it at default, you see how the background is blue and you see the face and the text is blank because we didn't enter any text. If I change this to dim, the background would dim. Oh, you won't actually see it from here. Okay. I'll show you in game in a little bit. One second. Let me go ahead and move this down here. So if I talk to them, as you can see, the background is dim with the name at the top left and the NPC graphic right there, right? So we could also have transparent and this just pretty much is where the box will show up, right? So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So now it's transparent showing up in the middle of the screen, right? So that is what the display message does. And you pretty much use this to make your dialogue between your NPCs and your characters. So let's go ahead and switch this. Hey, how are you doing? Question mark. Right. So now when you talk to this NPC, he's going to ask you, how are you doing? The other thing that you want to do with your NPCs is give is allow the player to actually respond back to the NPC. So you could do that by using the show choice option, which you could either say you have um, you have set you could pick up to six different options for them. And again, the background and the window position pretty much aligns with the same thing that I explained before where you have the window, the dim or the transparent, right? So let's go ahead and keep it dim and we're going to make it in the middle of the screen. And then I'm going to say I am good, not so well, right? So when you do the show choice, as you can see, depending on which one option you pick, you can have different, you could have the NPC respond differently. So right here, we could go ahead and have him say good to hear. And then here we could say, oh, wow. Right. So now if we go ahead and play test this, oh, stop moving. Right. He says, hey, how are you? And then we could pick, I'm doing good. Good to hear. And then if we pick the other option, not so well. Oh, how can I help? 
right? So that's how you let your NPCs and players interact with each other, right? Now, you could also have the NPC give you quests. So what we could do is, we could have a third option here that says, hey, I heard you have a quest for me, right? Um, and then also, I forgot to explain, the default window, I mean, the default choice shows which option will this cursor be on, right? So let's go ahead and make that one. And then the cancel is which um, option will be picked if you exit out of the choice. When you hit this allow, then that means they have to pick an option. When you hit breach, it will skip everything and does its own cancel um, custom thing when you actually cancel, right? So when you do here, um, I have a quest for you. Uh, let's have them respond with, yes, indeed. Can you bring me room key so I can? And you see this line right here? This line pretty much means that your text will be cut off if it goes beyond that. So you do want to be careful to always enter and then show choice again. Sure, I'll be back. And then we could just see that it's no right and then when you say you'll be back let's go ahead and make let's talk about these cell switches now right so like i said the cell switches only if affect this particular event no event will be affected by this particular cell switch being turned on so if i have another event that also has a cell switch a turned on there are two different cell switch aids and their conditions will never um, interfere with each other right so back to the self switch so we're gonna make it turn on the self switch right and then what we're gonna do turn on the self switch so pretty much he says hey yes indeed can you bring me back a room key right and then he's gonna give you that show choice again so you could pick if you want to do the quest or not if you decide to do the quest he's gonna turn on the self switch a on and then he's going to say thank you can't wait right so he says thank you can't wait right and then we're gonna copy this event page paste this event page and we're gonna go ahead and check for this self switch a being on right so we're gonna leave everything the same but the only thing we're gonna do is change this last option to still looking for the key right still looking for the key and then he's gonna say okay still waiting right so we have our first event page for when you don't have the quest then you get the quest then it turns on the cell switch so now this is what happens when you have the quest so you could still say he still says hi to you and you could still say you're doing good or whatever and you could still tell him that you're still looking for the key right and we're gonna copy this event page again one more time but this time we're gonna make it for when I actually have a room key. So let's go ahead and find that room key, right? So now the third page, again, all the event pages are the same. We don't need to change them. The third option now is going to be, I have the key. He's gonna say, oh wow, thanks. Here, take this. I know I'm just typing a whole bunch of crazy stuff, right? And then I'm gonna make him give us a weapon, maybe that. He's gonna give us a bow, right? After he gives us the bow, of course, he's going to take the key, decrease room key. He's going to take that item from you. So decrease by one. You could also decrease, change the item by a certain amount, depending on what you want to do. Again, like I said, um, when I explained this in the other tutorial, the party, all the change items are pretty much self-explanatory and they even all use the same interface, right? You pick the item you want. You pick if you want to increase or decrease it. You pick by the constant, I mean by the value or by a variable. So if a variable is equal to something, then you could decrease by that specific amount, right? So we got, we gained a weapon, we lost an item, right? And then finally, we're gonna control the self switch. This time we're gonna turn on um, B, copy this event page, paste this event page, remove this, go back to self switch, switch it to B, Right, and then this is going to be where he says we're gonna remove this last option because we no longer need it because the quest is done, right? And then he's gonna say, Yeah, that's pretty much it. He's just gonna say the regular stuff. This is when he gives you the items, this is when he does the quest. So now we have a quest. So if we go talk to this NPC now, all right, hey, I heard you have a quest for me. He's gonna say, yes, indeed. Can you bring me back the room key? He say, sure, thanks, can't wait. 
if I talk to him again, still looking for the key, right? Still look, I can still, still say the same stuff, still looking for the key. Let's go find that key for him. Oh, we found it on the first try. Look at that, right? Now he's gonna say I have the key. You give him the key. Oh, wow, thanks. Who was looking for this? He gives you the item, takes the key. Now you can't leave. Plus, you're, you're, why would you give him your only key? Oh, I found two keys? I, three for three, can't be. Okay, I was about to say. So I found him a key, got myself a key, turned on the cell switch. Let's get out of here, right? So that's pretty much how the gist of making NPCs. Now, there's a, some things you could do based on this. You could use a plugin like my um, character generator to generate random NPCs. Um, you could also try to find a way to give them random dialogue. So let's see actually what that would look like to generate a random NPC using my character generator. Let's make it persist as well. Go ahead. So if you had a plugin that you know controls stuff like that, you could use this to generate NPCs and then give them like generic stuff. So that way you could populate your world if you need to, right? Still says the same thing, still has the same graphics and everything, but he's just random. If we come back into this game, he may or may not be the same creature. Let's find out, same creature. Run it one more time. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. This is how you make NPCs in your world. You could have them just say random dialogue. Oh, it's a robot now. You could have them say random dialogues. You could have them just walk around. Um, as you can see, he switched back to the regular thingy because event page switched. But it's not supposed to do that because this is here. But whatever, guys. 